It's the beginning of the year. January is the month where everyone is counting calories and you as a climber may be wondering, how many calories does climbing burn? Well, I'd love to tell you that the average climber burns 450 calories per hour, but in reality, the amount of calories you burn is heavily dependent on you. How much do you weigh? What gender are you? How old are you? Are, is your heart rate elevated so many percent? What's your VO2 max? All of these things play into how many calories you burn. So in this video, we're gonna go through four different ways of measuring your calories. We'll also talk about some of the shortcomings and benefits of these ways of measuring calories. That way on your next climbing session, you can get a pretty decent idea of how many calories you burn per session. First way and probably the most common way is considering met value. Met value is a measurement of how much energy you use depending on the activity, and these are based on scientific studies. One drawback from this though is most of these studies are of elite athletes. An average person isn't an elite athlete, and an average person probably burns more calories, so there is some shortcomings with using that value. With that in mind though, they are based on studies, so let's dive into the met values for rock climbing. Now there are three different categories that met values have, and you can actually find that information on the met value resource website. And once you have the met value, you actually multiply that by your weight in kilograms, and that's the number you get for how many calories you're burning per hour. If you're working really hard, it's a met value of eight. However, there are two other categories. Moderate is 7.5. Low to moderate climbing and traversing is a 5.8. I weigh 66.2245 kilograms. So if I base it on a really hard climbing session, which I try to do, that would mean that I'm burning 529 calories an hour. Now I already mentioned some shortcomings when it comes to using your met value to determine how much calories you're burning per climbing session. And some other things that I didn't mention is it neglects your age, weight, height, gender, and these calculations are really important to include if you wanna get a more accurate idea. So there are actually calculators online that take your age, weight, height, gender, and you put in this information with the activity and it looks at your met value and it gives you a more accurate perspective of your calories. Now, based on that calculator, I was only burning 495 calories an hour. So I went from 529 calories to 495 calories. So there's a pretty significant drop there and that may be significant for you. So I would recommend trying that calculator. I'll actually use a link in the description below. Okay, this is a lot of information, numbers, math, blah, 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 I get it. So let's take a moment and I just wanna ask you guys to like this video and comment below, what are your goals for 2021 when it comes to climbing? The next way to measure your calories, I kind of enjoy because I don't like comparing myself to at elite athletes, I don't feel like they're quite on my level or I'm not quite on their level, I should say. So with this one, it still takes into account your age, your weight, your, your gender, and then it also pulls in your heart rate, which can be a pretty good measurement of how hard you're working. A shortcoming of measuring heart rate is someone who's really athletic, has a lower resting heart rate, and therefore their exercise heart rate is lower. That doesn't necessarily meaning, mean that they are working less hard than someone who has a higher heart rate with a higher exercise rate because they probably are increasing a similar amount. So just keep that in mind when you are looking at this calculation. It's actually a pretty big calculation which we put into a Google Sheets so that you can just input the information and then it will output how many calories you are burning for that session. Now, of course, if you know anything about measuring heart rate, um, or burning calories, you're probably wondering why is she focusing on heart rate so much? Your heart rate cannot determine how many calories you're burning. You should be considering your VO2 max because VO2 max is your metabolic rate. If you don't have a professional equipment like that, this may be a little bit more difficult for you to get. The Apple Watch and some other devices uses your movement and heart rate to measure a VO2 max. It's less than accurate. Um, 
My Apple Watch measures mine at 34.5 last week, and it has been a couple weeks ago, it was at like 38. So I don't know what my actual VO2 max is because I haven't paid for the professional equipment. Maybe if that's something you're interested in, let me know and I can see what it will take to do that. But I know from all the research that I've done that the watch isn't accurate because it's not actually measuring your oxygen. It's using some equation and it might get you like an idea, but it's definitely not a way to measure your calories. But if you do have access to your VO2 max, there is an even grander equation that includes your VO2 max, your heart rate, weight, age, gender. And from there, you'll probably get the most accurate view of how many calories you're burning per climbing session. Okay, so now I have walked you through four different ways to measure your calories burned during a climbing session. So which one should you use? Look, let's be honest, the med value is probably the fastest and most convenient way. So that's probably the way you're gonna do it. And to be honest, I get, I catch myself doing that as well. But when I input all of those details about like my weight and gender and those kind of things, I was really surprised with how much lower my calorie intake, my calorie burn was. So that means that I can't use this data as a way of deciding how many calories I need to eat during the day. So if you are looking for nutritional information, I have so much more research to do before I can make a video like that. If it's really important to you, I will find someone who is a specialist in nutrition and can provide those details so we can get as accurate information as possible.